First thing is always to plug the tractor in when it's been, you know, below 30, 20. Helps it um, last a lot longer. A lot of wear goes on engines when you start them cold. It's like many hours of, of use, just that cold start. Leather gloves, pretty key for this. You will ruin them eventually doing this. Now I make my own chain. Um, that has been a good move over the years. It's way cheaper than, um, just making sure this thing's on, way cheaper than a buying chain and then you have chain for all sizes whenever you need. It's skip tooth round ground chain. Uh, the skip tooth makes a lot less sharpening and that's really helpful. Um, it's a pro logger chain. They don't come with that unless you buy a pro saw. Um, it's a little less safe in terms of kickback, but oop, that's not my real concern. Uh, works great. So I've tried all sorts of sharpening jigs. I got this Husqvarna one recently, and I just keep moving right back to the way a pro logger showed me about 10 to 15 years ago, which is just get good at it with your with free hand because you just carry a file, two files, one you know for the rakers, one for the tooth, and you know it's not going to be as good as a professional uh, job, you know, with a grinder, but it's good enough, and then. I will use a Dremel tool to true it up sometimes and really get them back right, but I don't know. People go back and forth on this a lot. You do want to push down a lot because what will tend to happen by hand is you'll migrate up and you'll end up not cutting straight across enough but up and the teeth will get really small and you'll only be using the top of them. So that's why a lot of people say you have to use a jig or you won't be able to have that be right, but I don't know. The jig, I don't like the jigs that much. And obviously, the less you need, the better for everything. I like knocking off the, the filings a lot in between. That seems to make the file go a lot further. You can see that too. It's a little damaged on the, the lead point. I find, honestly, the, the, the times I've almost hurt myself, or have hurt myself actually the most, logging and logging related is dealing with the chain. You know, these things are really sharp, and just handling the bar with all these sharp teeth, you can slice yourself hardcore. You're not going to get an incredibly serious injury, you're not going to die from it, but um, you're definitely going to get hurt. So left hand your, hand, your guide hand should really definitely have gloves and it doesn't hurt if the other one does as well. Now I don't count my strokes, I do however much is needed to sharpen the tooth. And they're all going to be a little different height and I don't know, it works just fine. There's, there's many ways to do this, I'm sure there's going to be people that argue with, with what they've seen here and have a better way, but this works well for me. I've done it a lot of different ways over the years, and it's fast and efficient, which is important. You know, I'm not going to bring out an electric tool and have to hook it to the 12 volts on the tractor and run it that way. You know, I, I want it simple, fast, effective. Not necessarily the, the best job, but the most effective job. You'll notice I always rotate this way, so you're not cutting your gloves or your fingers. You're going away from the edge as you rotate the chain. Means skip tooth means half as many sharp, half as much sharpening. And sharpening is the the pain in the butt is maintaining your chain. So never touch a rock. You will touch a rock, but try not to. I mean, changing, um, knocking out the filter and cleaning the filter is easy compared to 
uh, and fast compared to the chain. It's all chain maintenance. I mean, the saw obviously has some maintenance too, a lot of maintenance, but it doesn't take much time day to day when you're cutting. And you see the dust coming off of this. You can tell how good your chain is, the shape it's in, by the what it's throwing off. And it should throw just um, chips. You know, you'll know a saw is good if you use a new chain. You'll see it's just throwing off nice big chips. The bigger the chips within reason, the better. Obviously not too big. If these rakers are too cut too low, you'd be throwing a huge chip and it could get bog the saw down or be dangerous. That raker tooth is like 0.025, um, I think is what it's supposed to be, below the elevation of the, um, let's dump everything out here for a second. We'll get my, so this is that Husqvarna jig I've tried in the past. It's a, it's all right. I like carrying a T27 with me because that's what's needed to open some of the saw, which you need to work on it. Um, I mean, it's nice not to have to make a trip back to the shop. If you pull a, the pull, if the pull cord breaks, you know, if you have everything you need in the field, you'll fix it. But you definitely need a T27. That'll sometimes be a trip back to the shop. Uh, you do need a flat file, of course. And the file gauge is really key. 0.025 inches is how much you want the raker tooth exposed. Let's see, so there's the raker tooth. That controls the depth of, of the cut as each cutting tooth passes the wood. Um, so I can tell just by looking at it that where, you know, I'll check a few obviously because um, they're different. Well, they're looking pretty good. Um, I sometimes go a little deeper than this for a more aggressive cut, especially in softwood. In hardwood, you wouldn't want to uh, go more aggressive or it could really be too much. That's nice. I think I went big last time with the, uh, with the cutting on this. So those are looking pretty good. And that's the side I actually took more off of. So this works just like this, by the way. You hold it on exposes the amount, the proper amount of that uh, depth tooth, and you just are cutting that, because these two stop it. And then some people in softwood will take another extra pass or two, like that. Be really careful not to touch that tooth, or you're dulling that leading edge, which is really key. It's probably the most important part of that edge. So, but we're pretty good. I'll check a couple more. Yeah, and let's just check the other side. I have a 20 inch bar on this, which is, this is my 460. This is a big saw for, for what I do. Um, it's a pro saw, which is awesome because then it just lasts longer. But a 360 pro is, is better for most of what I do. Uh, 036, oh, that might, I could maybe use a couple or one pass. Um, for most of my cutting, I mean, especially out in the woods, the 360 is nice. It's just lighter. Um, but I have that on my other site right now. And the 460 definitely, it's more of a workout and does more work faster. Uh, and the gas reservoir seems bigger. So I do seem to get further on a tank, although it uses a little more gas. Yeah, we're looking pretty good. So you're just feeling this very lightly, just like you feel a knife to see if it's sharp. And it should feel incredibly catchy and sharp. So these are the tools I'm always carrying with me. Someone on the last chainsaw video I made said carry the two files separately because they'll dull each other. I don't think they really bang into each other much because of the way they're in here, but that's an interesting idea. I like the thinking. I like thinking that, geeking out on it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm into that. This is also pretty key to carry in the woods. It weighs nothing. And this can adjust the choke, uh, the idle. Not that you need to often, but depends on your saw. It doesn't weigh much, so it's worth carrying. And then obviously I carry three wedges. Pretty much can get out of any bind with three wedges. Um, two in there, one in here. The scrunch, have to have that. Never walk in the woods without the scrunch or you're walking back out. Um, throw a chain, which happens. And then this is great. This took me a while to find online. Grizzly Peak Enterprises sells this one at Idaho. 
to hold the hatchet because then the hatchet can be behind you instead of carrying on the side which isn't as cool so yeah now one thing else i'll point out too is filling gas you know something like a million gallons or something of, of two-stroke gas is spilled every year in the united states i read you know it takes a pint of two-stroke gas or of any gasoline in an olympic sized swimming pool aquifer or you know drinking water source to contaminate it to the point of you shouldn't drink it like gas is super toxic um, it's more toxic in liquid form than in in atmospheric you know in vapor form so one thing to keep in mind is um i only fill now gas because you're going to spill sometimes on a concrete slab you know never on the soil and ground because it goes right in and then it, it's very toxic you never want it to get to the groundwater and we're above a spring here so i just make sure i'm either in the middle of the basketball court on a sunny day where any spill would evaporate or better yet just indoors on a slab and I will always try to, if I follow my own advice here, fill one of these first, right? You've got the, the chainsaw, the bar, chain oil, or chain, yeah, chain oil, which is this one. And you've got the gas, which is this one. Which one do you want to do first? Do the one that it can run without, which is the oil. If you do the gas, you could forget the oil and you'll still run the saw because you have gas and then you could really do some harm to your chain or the bar. The oil I put in first so if you, you can't forget it because then I haven't done the gas yet and the saw is not going to run without the gas. So um, probably makes most sense unless you never forget anything to do the bar oil first. Now, I used to use veg oil. I still do when I've used veg oil around. You know, this isn't ideal that this is definitely all getting in the woods. I think it, it breaks down, but, you know, this is a petroleum product. I will use use veg oil. Kind of just don't have, I don't have any right here right now. And I have this. Um, and uh, I used to use sporulated bar oil, which has mushroom spores in it, so you're flinging billions of spores around as you're cutting wood. Makes a lot of sense, right? I didn't see any difference, so I stopped doing that. But, I mean, can't hurt. Obviously, a good idea. Um, always make sure nothing gets in this. Clean everything before you open it, at least within reason. You know, you want to reduce... You're going to still get dirt in there, and you want to reduce the amount. Um, one piece of advice, actually, I just learned in the last year by someone who's on YouTube, actually, who's talking about how he runs saws for, like, decades, is that he goes, like, full-on two times the amount of oil than has been recommended in recent years. And that makes a lot of sense. Apparently, they used to recommend a lot more oil, and then for emissions... They started saying just go 40 to 1 or 50 to 1, which is the standard ratio in 2.6 ounces of oil to um, one gallon of gas, which isn't much. And uh, I've always erred on the side of more because I figured, well, better more than less. And then this guy's like, no, go, go twice as much. And he gets decades out of his saw. And uh, he said that he thinks that's a big reason. The other one is don't run it out of gas, which you always hear, run your saw out of gas, especially between storage. Now, maybe to store it makes sense, but he's like, if the chainsaw, a two-stroke engine's running out of gas, what's it running out of? It's running out of oil. Running out of oil is not good. Oops, so I overfilled talking to you. So there you go. I mean, I'll do that when I'm not talking and paying attention fully too, but not as often. That's a good, good lesson. Um, you gotta watch it a little more than I did, but that's a good reason to be on a slab. I'll put this back over here. Keep that out of the way. Now this is just gonna evaporate very easily um, and not be in the groundwater. Now that's over full, not good, but it will happen to you many times. So don't be above ground. Now try not to touch gas. It's toxic stuff. It's got benzene in it. So, uh, benzene's bad stuff. 
I'm gonna make sure this, you know, there's some gas on this now. Make sure that's kind of gonna burn off in the sun a bit before I go handle it and get on my clothes and shit, and then I'm breathing it in all day. Um, so let's get out and do some cutting. hardest part about a lot of the fitting that we and a lot of people do is just getting the trees on the ground not getting them hung up and not damaging damaging as little as possible the future understory future crop trees and the existing understory Perfect logging conditions. Just grippy, but very hard crust. You can make it like you weren't even here come spring, except for some tops of trees being down. The goal is no ground impact. I know for people who want to promote pine, that's not the case, but I like to disturb the ground as little as possible. And birch. So I'm gonna put it over here so we roll it off of the the uh, stump. This thing could slide all the way down to here and kill me. So I'm gonna go to the other side. Got it, just barely. up to where we grab the next log. 
And I'm going to, in preparation for that, I'm actually going to move this log to the left on the hitch. So there's room for the next one. So I just moved that from far right to kind of middle right. And now I'm actually going to even get it over further left because all the logs are coming in from the right.